Welcome to the channel and welcome to episode 21. I'm Bruce and I'm joined by Keith in his Michigan studio. Wait, I thought I was being joined by Bruce in the Nebraska studio. Are we really going to go over this now when we have company over? I really think you're making a distinction without a difference. But if it makes you feel better, we join each other to produce our show in our separate studios in Michigan and Nebraska. There, I even gave Michigan top billing. Okay, good. That is better. So, but wait, what is this company thing? We have company? Yes, we sure do. We have our first ever guest appearance on Dad's Talk Tech. You mean our first ever guest besides Nessa? But, uh, but who is our guest? Is it uh, Bono? Is it uh, Brad Pitt? Harrison Keith, Ford? Um, it isn't actually anyone famous. We have an expert from the field of security joining us today. We need bodyguards now? Wow, how many subscribers do we have on this thing? I, I should really be checking the reports more often. That is huge. Oh, sorry, not that kind of security. It's actually cyber security. Ah, that makes a lot more sense. But that does bring up to mind uh, that if you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. In fact, I'll even show you. And don't forget to like this video. As a matter of fact, you can do it now, and if for some reason at the end of the video you didn't actually like it, you can hit the like button again. However, I doubt it's going to come to that. So, uh, how about our guest? Is he just standing in this virtual hallway somewhere wondering what we're doing? Ah, crap. He sure is. So, I'm not really sure if we can use his real name, so let's just introduce him as Bob. Hey guys, you can call me by my real name, Arturo. Okay, nice to meet you, Arturo. Yeah, I'm super stoked, so happy to finally meet you guys. I'm a huge fan of the show. Really? Of course I am. It's what you put in the script, right? You know, he, he tends to do that to me too, Arturo. You should see all of the compliments he gives himself and sneaks into the script on me. I, I catch most of them, but occasionally one of them slips through. I'm Ron Burgundy? Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? Hey, real quick, why is my face blurred out? Oh, I thought we would need to do that for security reasons. No, I, it's fine without the blurring. It's not really needed. Yeah, Bruce will fix that. So, I assume you're joining us from some kind of secure bunker? No, nah, it's just uh, my kitchen slash dining room area. Hmm. I thought for sure it would be a bunker. Interesting. Nope. Just the kitchen slash dining room area. So, are you going to show us how you use your command center to keep your internet connection safe? Oh, yeah. I'd definitely love to see that. Well, that is if you can show us. Uh, well, I just call this my mobile PC, or my phone for short. <laughs> Before we get sidetracked, though, uh, the reason I'm here to join you guys today is I just want to talk about some quick, simple rules or tools to help you keep your internet browsing safe uh, as possible. Oh. You know, you probably should have just said so right off the bat. Yeah, that definitely would have saved us a whole bunch of time, and I wasted a perfectly good blur effect. You're 100% right. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Since I'm not coming to you from my bunker or command center, you're probably wondering what qualifies me to talk about these things to you. You know, thank you so much for addressing the elephant in the room. I was quite frankly wondering that myself. Fair enough. Well, I did work for the U.S. government on defensive measures, as well as the offensive side working to exploit mobile systems. Ah, so you got caught and you were either offered to go to prison or go to work for the good guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> what I was going to explain before you jumped in is uh, I worked offensively for a payment solutions company to identify their vulnerabilities before a real hacker came in. Meaning there would be times where I'd exploit real vulnerabilities in their systems to show them what needed to be done to harden them or secure them. Keith. Um, we discussed Arturo's background in the production meeting, remember? Uh, clearly I didn't or I wouldn't have asked. You were probably watching the Muppets instead of listening to me. Again! Guys, guys, I hate to interrupt, but my wife's staring at me and she wants me to get the, the lawn done here pretty quick, so can we move this along? Ah, uh, yes, the security conversation thing. Sorry about that. Please proceed. Great. Well, here are five quick tips for your safe browsing and internet usage. One, phishing attempts. Two, password creation. Three, reusing those passwords. Four, updating your systems. And five, 
antivirus, anti-malware software. But wait, I like to attempt to go fishing when I visit Illinois. Why should I stop? Actually, if we're not talking about that type of phishing, what I'm talking about here uh, is when there's a communication via email, text, Facebook Messenger app, or something of that nature, where someone's trying to steal uh, information about you or your credentials so they can either impersonate you or gain access to your accounts. Wait, Keith, you, you go fishing in Illinois? Why didn't we go when I visited with you? Ah, oh, geez, here we go. Why don't we finish this after the episode, okay? Arturo's got a, a lawn to mow. Uh, okay, yeah, good point. Sorry, Arturo. Please continue. Right, so phishing emails are not rotten real. What we're talking about here, again, is when a scammer or someone malicious trying to steal your identity or steal your account information so they can go and do malicious things. So what can we do to identify them? Really what we're looking for, here's some quick tips, is look at where the email's coming from. So if you get an email from Microsoft.com, in the email, that's where it says it's coming from. But if you look at the, the originating email sender, and it says 1234 at gmail.com, you know it's not real. Another quick way to identify these phishing email attempts is one, they have a lot of misspelled words, or sometimes they'll use words that aren't normal uh, for email communications. So, so those are some of the things you're gonna to wanna to look for and kind of keep an eye out to really identifying those phishing emails. Now we're gonna talk about password creation and password usage. So when it comes to passwords, we want it as complex uh, as possible, right? Uh, we're all human, we can't remember 15 digit passwords. So we do our best, but one of the key things you wanna remember is don't use your date of birth, don't use a uh, family member's date of birth, don't use favorite colors, those kinds of things. You typically wanna use like a phrase uh, like, uh, I love donuts and then maybe a series of numbers and special characters. You want to switch things up as much as possible uh, and make them as unique as possible. And when in doubt, you can always use a password manager to help you kind of keep those passwords secure or even create those passwords for you. Another part of that password security mechanism that we're gonna talk about is reusing your passwords. We're all creatures of habit, you know, and we, you know, we all are, are, are guilty of this, right? Uh, but when it comes to passwords, you really want to not use your, the same password for every single account, every single thing you do. Why is it is because if one account gets compromised and you're using the same password for everything, all your other accounts are going to be compromised as well. And that's why I mentioned you should get a password manager to help you manage those passwords and keep them unique. But at the end of the day, if you have nothing else but pen and paper, write them down and keep them secured somewhere locked away in a filing cabinet or anything just for your eyes only. Here's another big one, updating your computer systems. Every month, Microsoft or whoever happens to be your software provider releases patches and updates to vulnerabilities and everything. You wanna keep them as updated as possible. Uh, you wanna update it as frequently as available. And the other thing is you don't wanna be using a system that's no longer supported. And we'll use uh, Windows XP as an example. Yes, it's a great operating system. It still works, but if it's on the internet, it is not secure. There's no way to secure it. So you wanna keep your system as up to date as possible. Uh, you don't want to use any end-of-life product or services out there. Uh, and that goes to software as well. Rolling into software, we're talking about antivirus, anti-malware software. Uh, you want to make sure you're keeping those definitions up to date as possible, running them as often as possible, keeping them on a, on a time frame where they're auto-scanning your systems, and just making sure that they're running optimally. If you're paying for a subscription service, continue to pay. Uh, there's a lot of different softwares out there. I'm not going to uh, promote one over the other. Uh, it's just to make sure that you're aware that there are options out there and you should look into them. Wow, that was great information, Arturo. I consider myself very aware of computer security, but there are a number of tweaks in there that I can implement. Keith, how about you? Oh, yeah, great stuff. Keith, what were you doing? Were you subscribing to an antivirus and anti-malware program? Didn't you already have that? Well, yeah, of course I did, but this reminded me that, you know, it was time to renew. Yeah, that's it. It was time to renew. Renew, huh? Well, okay. Well, I'm glad you're on top of that, Keith. It's really important. Uh, if you're paying for that subscription, that's great because you get a, a little bit extra service out of that. I would say don't lapse on it and keep paying it. Lapse? Who said it lapsed? Hey, you weren't watching my screen, were you? How long were you watching? Long enough, Keith. But... Now that you've got it covered, I'm sure you're going to stay on top of it going forward. Hey guys, uh, it's time to wrap this up. 
Wow, he is good. How did you know that, Arturo? It's time to go mow the lawn. She's getting impatient for me to go get my chores done. Ah, uh, we've been there, Arturo. Hey, we can't thank you enough for joining us today and sharing all of this valuable information on cyber slash internet security. Yes, this was very informative, and hopefully this helps our viewers keep themselves a little bit safer in this digital world that we're all living in. And don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and click the bell to get notified when new videos are up. Talk to you guys later. Dang! Arturo, you are a natural. We'll have to have you back to help close episodes out. Absolutely. And for Bruce, Keith, and our special guest Arturo, thanks for joining us today. And you'll see most of us back for the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.